always OGS, good suggestion there and see if that's any use. Um, and I'll switch my camera quickly so you can see it's actually me. Yes. Hi. Oh, my, Hello. my microphone's looking even more rick rickety this week. <laughs> I've got a new a new crocodile <laughs> clip to uh, attach it. It's um it's pretty pretty Ooh. low. Tech. Well, you Best know, sell it out. It's um, you know, it's typically the thing that you want to do is a little bit different, so it doesn't exist in the marketplace, right? So what I want to do is I want to have this microphone, but I don't just want a USB microphone because I need to route it through the desk and so I can put the Zen delay and stuff on it. I can't just have a normal little microphone because it doesn't provide enough level. So I needed a proper one with a sort of Canon and a line level thing. And you can't get that built into a headphone. And so, um, so I, I derived this, uh, this, this crocodile clip because I don't always want it on the headphones either, right? Because it would be in the way. So it actually kind of works, but it tends to wag waggle about a bit, you see, which you probably noticed on Pirate TV. And then he has to come in and... Sennheiser, Sennheiser has a model with um, the HD25, okay. you know, the popular, with a mic. And then you have, um, I'm not sure if it's two XLRs or one XLR with, with like the, the headphones the and the uh, mic combined, and then you need to build or sold an adapter. But yeah. I know they exist, and it's more for intercom purposes, but it's the same idea, you know. What's so the model? Sennheiser? It's the HD25. That's the basic model, and I know they have one with a headset. Yeah, um, okay. Thank you, um, so Matteo. So I, ca I, can, I can send you a link if I find it. I know they exist. So um, I, 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 I was that model. Yeah. But the thing is, I did have a look around before, and I, I thought I looked at everything, and I couldn't find quite what, what I wanted, but I'd be happy to be proved wrong. Um, so anyway, I quite like my little rickety Keith Robinson yeah. thing <laughs> now. Cool. So everyone okay? Surviving all right? Yep. Yep, yep. Just about. <laughs> Just about, yep. Um, we've had some nice, couple of nice days here in the UK. And it's been really warm today. And then next week, they're forecasting snow for a week. Oh, good. I'll tell you what, I saw that earlier on. This afternoon, I looked out of the window and saw butterflies. And I was like... It's going to fucking snow. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Oh, the darling buds. Yes, they're going to get their asses frozen off just as they were tenderly, shyly poking out because everything's <laughs> fucked up nowadays. So. But in fact, you know, it has been known to have snow in April, as my neighbours reminded me. So, as anyway, Prince reminded us all, sorry, I believe. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, um, we've been, we're bodling on. I've spoken to Janaz. Our, our property deal in India where we've been trying to buy this one acre of land for years has finally fallen through. Then he had Oof. to sort of walk out of the meeting because they just became revealed as completely useless. She'd <laughs> like driven 11 hours to, from Bombay to get to this place, having been promised it would all be okay. And then, then it wasn't. But actually, between you and me, I'm slightly pleased because I didn't really think we needed it. And um, <laughs> it's better to com concentrate on her lovely wooden family bungalow that she's got in near near Bombay, which I installed a high speed internet connection a couple of years ago, which was a hit. Okay, right. Um so I've no idea as usual what to um talk about with that. It's possibly we're um running out of stuff to talk about, although there is there's usually concealed depth. Um so uh yeah, I could throw it open to see if anyone has got anything that they'd like to ask about. Otherwise, I can just dive in and things might reveal themselves. But any questions come up? Everyone Do you um, ever have any sort of preferred ways of using the sub, the sub element? The sub bass synthesizer? Mm. Yeah. OK, let's have a look at that. So I'm going to turn on the playback from the top view. All right, we can see that, yeah? Yeah, let's have a look at the sub, the sub bass synthesizer. Um, so the sub bass synthesizer is accessed from the master screen. And 
done. Now I don't know if we've, this isn't, no, I'll come back to that in a minute, but notice the width there in the middle, which I think is a new thing, which is maybe not out yet. Um, so on the right, the sub bass synthesizer, and like with the master effects, you turn it on and off with this uh, button here. So let's turn it on and let's um, trigger it with something. How does the sub bass synth work? The sub bass synthesizer generates bass tones triggered from always channel one which in all my sets, I always have the drums in channel one. Okay, so typically the idea of the sub bass is that you get some sort of 808 kind of boom, boom sound that's triggered from the drums. And what you want it to do generally is be triggered by the kick drum, the bass drum of uh, whatever clip's playing in, in uh, the drums track. Okay, so it's a bit in that way, it's a bit like the pump page which we can have a look at later as well because it's quite related to this so we'll just keep it to the drums track for the moment and I'll put a drum on <laughs> That one will do. I'm just going to turn it down because I need to get the balance right with my microphone. So there we've got our, our drum clip playing, which is called Beirut. And um, if you look at the sub bass synthesizer button, can you see the whole screen? On mine, it's getting cut off. You can see the whole thing, can you? Uh, the leftmost side is slightly cut off. Left-hand side is a bit cut off. Is that better? Or the other way? Other way. Other, other way. way. Yeah. So it, it maybe if you need to, to view it by a gallery. Yeah? So I don't know if, you, if you're looking at everyone on screen, but the best is if you just concentrate on the jam thing. Okay. How, how does one get that? Hi, Ian. How do we know how to switch the... Top right-hand side, there's a button I pressed and it suddenly made everything go proper. I'm on Chrome on Windows and there's a, like three dots in the bottom right-hand corner and you can go to tile view or the main presentation. Change layout. But Okay, yeah, the three buttons, three dots in the bottom right hand corner on Chrome. You can do change layout, and I think probably we want spotlight. Okay, so then. Oh, yeah. Okay, can you, um, can you see, can you see the screen? Have I sort of taken over? If we do spotlight, it may be. Yeah, it works great. But then if someone speaks, do they take over then? Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they oh. do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We need yes. to mute. Yeah, but it's nice to have you as well. Um, sidebar, how about that? No, that's also going to... Uh, or maybe, what if I can pin myself? Pin. Ah, I've pinned myself now. How about that? Hello, hello, hello. Hi there. Uh, <coughs> Who's that? Right. Uh, this this is Shaq, but I can still I can still see the kit. Me too. Mm. Yeah, I can see you all though. Uh, one by one. Sorry, you can see everyone, or you can just see Jam. Each time I can see Jam, and if someone interrupts, I can see them. So it's fine. Same here. Same yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a great piece of technology. <laughs> um, also, what about that? What about now? 
We can see Jam. I can see Jam. Yeah, I can see Jam. Jam and I can see Ian's face. Yeah, people. <laughs> Poor people. you. <laughs> it's everybody speaking, isn't it? Really, I don't know. Okay. Sure. All right. Let's let's just do it so that everyone's muted unless they've got something to say, and that then hopefully I'll be able to have the the main screen on. Is that okay? Go to it. Showing jam now. Everybody. Yeah? That's everybody know that you the space. Just. Uh, no, I didn't actually know that. Thank you, Mike. That's a good one. Space bar mutes and unmutes. Does That's it. it. Okay, good. Hi there, Ian Taylor. Hi, welcome. Hi, Matt. You're hey, right. It's Ernesto, is that right? Yeah. 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 Hello. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't make last week. I was stinking cold. Oh well, you well. recovered. <laughs> Almost. Um, it, interesting. I think it was you, um, who revealed somewhere that you had only just discovered the help function in Jam. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Like, yeah. On your first tutorial, I can. Yeah. You know, you... I, I actually, um, it's actually really useful feedback because, you know, as the designer, it never occurred to me that people wouldn't find it, right? But I can imagine now that when, you know, if I see something that says help, I think if I press that, you don't, you don't know that it's going to connect to something that's right there in the app. You think it's going to go into some long thing where it connects to an online manual. That's what most of them are like. Yeah. And so yeah. you end up not pressing it. So I've d I'm moving towards some... Um, I was just speaking to Chris, the main coder, yesterday, um, that when you first use the app for the first time, it will load up with the help on. So you'll see it. It will be in your face. Yeah, and then the, yeah. the button will be flashing saying close or something like that. So that way, hopefully, that will introduce you. So actually, you might have felt stupid, but in fact, it was a really <laughs> useful bit of feedback, the sort of thing that we wouldn't have realized ourselves. So good one okay yeah I, i've been using it nearly yeah, nearly a year now and i've always seen help in the corner but i, I just wonder normally i press loads of buttons and try and find out what things do but yeah, the help yeah. one, i just never touch well you know people don't like to read the manual do they but i think this <laughs> no. this this sort of in-app overlay help is a bit different it's a bit more useful than the normal manual you can yeah. even operate the um you know you can operate the app whilst the help's on you can still play stuff if you want. Yeah. So that's another thing. Okay, so let's go back. So we were talking about the sub-base. Uh, turn Beirut on. Now here where it says sub-base, you can see a red dot flashing. Okay? So that's indicating the activity of the sub-base. You can see it sort of flashing as the thing, as the clip plays. Now what that's doing is indicating that it, the sub-bass is being triggered by that clip. Now we're not hearing the sub-bass, at least I'm not hearing it, probably because it's too low, um, too low a tone to hear on my headphones. So this is where we go over to hear the volume and colour, right? Now the colour is a bit of uh, possibly not the best name. Basically, if you turn the color up by moving the slider this way, you'll hear a higher version of the bass, an octave up. You can now, that's probably more audible now, right? And if I turn the volume up, it should be a lot more audible. You can hear it's sort of actually going into the distortion. If you look at the meter over here, you can see that it's quite going into the red. If I turn the bass off, well, actually, the meter's about the same, probably because the compressor's still doing it. Let's keep it on nice and loud. Okay, so can everyone hear the bass that that is generating? If you listen to the clip that's playing, and if you trace the pattern that the kick drum's playing, you can see that the bass, hear that the bass synth is following it. Dum, 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 dum. That's what the kick drum's playing. Like if I went to the mixer page, let me use this tone, which is like an EQ. I'll filter off all the treble. Now that kind of strips it down to just the kick drum so you can hear that without the interference of the other stuff. I'll put the, that back in. 
these are I've never I've never sort of normally used these actually but these tone controls are quite interesting see that that's filtered out all the the mids and the tops from the it's only playing the mids and the tops all the bass has been filtered out by turning the tone right up and conversely if I turn it right down it's shelved off all the, the tops and the mids and you've only got the the uh, the bass part of the clip it's like a simple tone control Okay, let's go back to the sub bass. So, there's quite a lot of control you can have with the sub bass, right? Um, now, generally, the follow button is on, right? And what that tells it to do is to look at up here, each set is got a note there that tells you what the root note is. So. It, it's in this one I know is in D. When you create the pack, you actually have to put that in manually. You have to work out what key it's in and enter that as a detail in the pack. Right? You do that in the, the page here. See, if I wanted to, I could say it was, let me change it to E. It'll be it, mistaken because I know it actually is in D, not E. But if we go back, see now that the sub bass has changed its note to E because it's always following the note when follow is on it's always following the root note that the pack is in okay I'm gonna go back and change that back to D again or oh, here's another example now because I'm in go to the settings I'm in time stretch equals repitch all, which is the mode that I like the best, which means if I increase the BPM, everything is going to go up in pitch. And if I, I like a record speeding up, which will change the root note. So let me do that. Let's madly turn this up. And here's a little function, which um, I don't think I've ever explained either. I'm gonna, I, can, I could just go up one BPM at a time and you'll see, when, it, when I've pressed it a few times, it will change from D to D sharp. But actually in between times, it's not just D sharp, it's D sharp a little bit sharper and 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 a little bit sharper and, bit sharper and, bit sharper and goes to E. Now sometimes that's not very good because it won't be in tune. So there's a clever thing you can do that. You want to reset the root note, double tap it at the bottom there. I'll reset the BPM, we're back to 106 D. Now, if I hold shift down, right, open the BPM, hold shift down, and I press one of these nudge up, you see it's jumped from 106 to 112.3, and it shows D sharp. And now that actually is D sharp. It's properly D sharp. So each click like that, when you do that with shift and one of these buttons, it goes up by one semitone an exact semitone. So that is quite useful when you're trying to, say you were trying to play some guitar along with it, with a pack, um, and uh, yeah, your, your guitar was in, you wanted to play in E. The easiest way would be to jump up the BPM until you saw E there, and then that'd be nicely in tune with your guitar. Okay, slight digression. Let's go back to the, um, oh, I know what I was saying. Yeah, that's right. Let's, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. Back to E again, right? We go back to the thing, and again, you see the sub bass synth has moved up to E. I'll move it down to D sharp. You see the sub bass synth is in D sharp. That's because follow is on. If follow isn't on, it won't do that. Reset the BPM again. Now you see, because follow is not off, not, not on, the sub bass synth root note is stuck on D sharp. So, I'm going to turn it down, and the way I do that is I use this note down here. This is the root note of the synth, the sub bass synth, and I slide it up. It goes from a bottom C, C sharp D, blah, 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 up again to C in the middle, and then up once more. So it has a range of two octave altogether, altogether, right? So I can manually do that as well, but most of the time I want to have follow on. Okay, so um, 
I'll just stop to quickly ask any questions so far on the sub base. Anything not clear? Okay. All right. I'll proceed on. Do do don't be afraid to just jump in and ask about anything because uh, um yeah it's it's uh you're welcome to ask any questions at any time. Okay. So let's see what else we can do with the sub base. Okay. So now Wes put this in. One of the coders put this in. It's not the most important function, but here where it says sign, you can hold that and change it to dine. And that gives a slightly, that's a different way of calculating the sub bass, the sound. It's a different quality to the sub bass. Personally, I always have it on sign, but it's another thing you can try there. Okay, now what other controls have we got? We've looked at the volume and color here. Let's have a look at, um, this one I quite like, steps and bars. Now, these are ways of making space because if you hear that sub bass, it's quite insistent. It's a bit much. So steps controls how many of the possible notes the sub bass could play when it could be triggered, that it actually plays because you can tell it to miss some out. So I'm gonna reduce the steps now. And you can see now from the little red light on the sub bass that it's off about half the time. That's because steps is only on 0.5 now. So half the time it's going like, okay, you want some space. I'm not gonna play the sub bass on these steps. You hear it? Now it's just going bop, 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 space. Bop, 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 space. Okay. And bars is similar. Bars is also saying, well, at the moment I'm playing every bar, but maybe I only want to play half half the bars, every other bar. Steps is the, the notes within a bar, and bars is the number of bars. So if I turn that down to halfway, you see it's taking a whole bars. Now it plays these steps. Here we go. Dog 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 space. And now a whole bar space. Dog 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 space and now a whole bar space. Uh, let's reduce the steps down even further. Now it's just going bar bar and, and a bar space and bar bar and a bar space bar bar and a bar space. And if I reduce the oh, now it's stopped playing. Oh there we go. If I take the bars even further down That's, it's missing out even more bars. Here we go. Bob, bob, bob. And a bar space, and a bar space, and a bar space, and here we come back in. Bob, bob, bob. Okay, so that's a nice way to make space, otherwise the sub bass can be a bit insistent. But actually, you might say, well, that, I want some, um, I like, I'm gonna turn the bars back up now. sort of inter intermediate setting but I might want those those bass notes when they do play it's a bit bit more powerful so I'm going to turn the release up and the release is how long each note plays for so I'm going to whack that up now you hear that old style kind of 808 and a bit of space Okay, so that's, you know, nice kind of hip-hop heaviness there. That bass is quite nice and insistent, but it's just playing a few notes, but the notes that it's playing are longer. Um, and then there's one more control, which is here, which is release. Um, now, what if I press help to remind myself? Well, I've rather naughty. I've written these because actually Sorry, the release is how long it plays. That's what we were talking about, how long it plays. And the tack is, I've noted it's equals delay after the sub trigger. So what that's trying to say is, if we increase the attack, then after the sub bass is triggered, it will wait a little bit before the sub bass actually starts. Let's try that. 
turn the attack up. You hear now it's kind of fading in. And that's quite useful sometimes because you might want to hear, if you don't have the attack on, the sub bass comes in as soon as the kick drum plays, the sub bass kind of takes over from the kick. And I have noticed this on, on hip hop records particularly. It's nice to have a little time for the actual kick drum before that heavy sub comes in as a reinforcement. So that's what the, the attack is about. Yeah. And then there's finally some one function, one fun function here, which pi is pitch ramp. So it's easier to show than to explain. Let's whack it up. It's applying a pitch change to it. Let me whack it even more extreme. Turn up the release even more so we get a longer release. Okay, so that is the sub bass. Um, yeah, okay, any questions about the sub there? Sounding nice nice and heavy. Ian Taylor, you've got a mad picture there. Are you still there, mate? <laughs> um, yeah, I hopefully uh, you, you can hear that and it sounds quite good. Um, you know, it is it, it, if you work a lot with clips that you've made yourself or, you know, a lot of clips in the drums, they already have sub bass, so you don't always need sub bass. But say I've sampled you know an old funk record and it's it's nice it's a nice drum break but it's not got much bass on it but it's got a nice definite kick then I can use the sub bass to generate some sub for that and that will make it thump out on a nice big modern system and it will sound like it's more modern because otherwise sometimes when you play older stuff and older samples they can't quite match up to your modern tracks because they're just not come from an era before they had that bass basically so this is a way, a sort of trick to get get your bass, get your bass in the place. Okay. Okay. Uh, it makes me think um, of something. Um, this is a, a sort of advanced topic um, and quite confusing, but um, I'm going to launch into it just. Um, because it may have been confusing people. When I do a snapshot, when sorry, when I when I save a patch, right? A patch is saving pretty much the complete state of the app. Yeah. One thing it, it doesn't save is it doesn't save these master effects here, like the compression and the air and so on, because there's we think that there's something that you set once and then that's so for the whole, you want that to play on all the patches, right? So that's like something that comes at the end. It's not included in the, the state of the app that you save it when you save a patch, okay? So they're, they're sort of, they're global, those settings. You set but the sub bass is, is different because you might well want to have different sub bass settings for different patches in your track, yeah? So you know, if you've got a, a basic um, sub bass pattern, it, it depends how you're going to create your set. If you're using one from creating a set from scratch, or if you're maybe messing with one of the sets that comes with the app and then then trying to update it. But it can be confusing because each of the patches has got its own setting for the sub bass. So say now I've got this. Let's, uh, we'll keep it on this setting because the pitch ramp shows it's quite nice and distinctive, okay? Okay. So I'll keep, let's keep it playing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that now. It's a patch. Remember how we save a patch? We go up to the top to these patches. We long hold on it. And we'll call it high... 
pirate bay. Uh, okay, so that's fine. That, that pirate base is saved there. But watch what happens if I recall another patch from before. See, the, safe, the, sub, the, the master effects have stayed the same because they're stored globally, but the sub-base have changed because the sub-base is saved into each patch separately. Okay, let's go back to Pirate and you'll see the master effects won't change, but the sub-base will. Keep your eye on that. Here we go. Two, three, four. Now we're back to our Pirate base. Okay. So, um, this, the whole thing with the patches can be quite confusing because say you created a bunch of patches like we've got here, right? And then you think like, oh, well, yeah, they're great. But actually, I wish I could now go back and change and add some sub base to all of them. Now, the, the way that, the only way that it's obvious to do that, you'd have to go back to each one and then manually change the sub base, add the sub base and then save it again, right? Which is, a, it is long, basically. So some t it, sometimes it's better to set up the sub base at the beginning, but it's not always possible to do that because you might want to experiment with it later. Now there is a, there is a workaround to do this and this is not just to do with the sub base, it just is to do with other things as well, but this is, pretty confusing but I'm just going to throw it in there in case anyone wants to learn this and and take it further um, yeah yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I let me just see if this works actually no because if I recall the patch now if I recall the patch it's going to go over the base okay so basically there's a I, I had this problem that I might have created a load of patches and then later I'd wanted something that I wanted to change in all the patches at once and I can't be bothered to go through and individually save them. So I made a special way to do this, but this is only available through a special map mode, okay? So if you're looking at the app, you won't see this, but I will give you the key to unlock the map mode so that if you want to, you can mess with it. But this is, it's potentially, you can, you can mess your setup using this. So it has to be used with caution. Maybe I, I may be confusing everyone. I'll just, as I've started now, I'll just finish off a little bit. If you go to the other settings here, when you've enabled map mode, which you do by typing in a code at the beginning of the app, you'll see this thing macros with a picture of a wizard's wand, okay? And what macros does is it's, it looks at the last thing that you did and it asks you if you want to apply that to all the patches. Okay, so I'm going to give the example now. I went and I changed the sub base. I changed the, the pitch ramp. Yeah, and I changed the bar and the steps. And now I got a nice, I've got a nice sub base setting. I say, okay, right, I really like that. And I want to put that on all my patches. As we've seen, if I just recall the patches at the top, they will revert to the sub base settings, the default ones, which it wasn't even on for, which is what most of the patches were saved with. I'm gonna go to my macros. And look what happens when I tap the macros button. No. What have I actually done that for? Okay. Pitch ramp. Okay. Last parameter change equals global sub base pitch ramp and the setting of it it's telling me the last thing you touched was the sub base pitch ramp update all patches with that change question mark and if i want to i'll update the patches let me try tapping that update patches now comes another pi uh, another dialog box now do you want to save just the current parameter which was the last one was the pitch ramp or do you want to include the current state of all the parameters in the sub base group? Okay, so it's clever enough it say, okay, maybe you, you, it's not just the, the ramp that you want to do. You've come up with a whole set of settings for the sub base group and you want to apply that to all the patches. 
Okay, so I could either have param, which would just do the sub-base pitch ramp, or I could have group, which will do the whole of the sub-base settings, the follow, the attack, the release, all the other things that we looked at. So I'm going to hit group. And now it's saying alert, because this way I'm going to now edit all my patches. So if I fuck it up, then I've written over my patches. So before doing any of this, if you do want to experiment with this, save your patch as a new copy. So if it fucks up, you can always go back to it, yeah? Because this can't be undone, this thing. Okay, so it's telling you, summarizing what's going to happen. Save to all patches in current set. Current param, sub-base pitch ramp, channel not applicable. Update all sub-base parameters, yes. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. When I do that, it will make a horrible noise. Playback will stop, and sometimes these stabs light up. But now we can press play again. <coughs> Now I'm going to trigger, let's go and have a look at the, so we can see the sub-bass synth. See those settings there? Remember what happened before when I changed the patch to another one? Those settings all got changed. But now we've told all the patches should be updated to this new setting. Let's try hitting another patch and see what happens. That's interesting. It's done it. But actually, the, it hasn't saved that the sub bass was on. I think that might be a bug, actually. But you see from the settings, the attack and the release and the volume and the color, that they're what we set. What are they, in fact? Where's my one pirate? my hat actually because it hasn't worked um, let me just try doing it once more turn that pitch ramp go to there go to the macros the last parameter change global sub base pitch ramp one update all pa patches of that change update patches param I want to update the group do I want to do it yes now let's try again go back to the master Okay, right, that's very interesting. That's very interesting because that, that isn't working. So I've now doubly confused everyone trying to demonstrate something that doesn't actually work. So I'll backtrack a little there and I'll look into that and find out what's going on. But for if it makes any sense what I'm talking about, sometimes you want to make a change to an effect or the sub bass or something that is stored in the patches and you want to change all the patches. Rather than having to go and update them one by one, there is a way that you can do that. In like it's like a batch processor, basically. Um, and I'll um, I'll look into mending this and uh, demonstrate it again. So if that makes any sense to anyone, it can be it can save a lot of time. The the reason we thought it was really cool to have these patches at the top that save the complete state of what you're doing. There's no other bit of software that really does that. So it just means that you can really get stuff sounding exactly how you want and just snapshot it into a patch and you know you can recall it there. It's brilliant for live. But the drawback is sometimes later you might go, fuck, I wish I'd had something a bit different on all the patches. And so this is a workaround that we did and I haven't released it to the public because it's complicated um, and it's not... Yeah, it's a bit finagly, and also you can mess up your sets. But as we're the advanced class, I thought I did just mention that idea. It, I'll look into why that didn't work, and I'll come back to it. But um, I if you're following what I'm saying, maybe you'll see that that can be useful. Um, I, I'll, uh, well, actually, let's just for a laugh, I'll show you how to do the things. You, cl you go back to the store, and this is where you put your gift code long hold on that button there the three things here and enter ninja code and the code is <coughs> please give me special power pretty sure that's it or is it powers i can never remember invalid ninja code okay it might be please give me special power 
by that point. Turn it quickly. Don't worry, I will make it so complicated. <laughs> yes, please give me special power. I'll type it into the chat, but don't go sharing it around quite yet because it's only for us because I don't want to have to support it because I, I we can't you know be explaining this to everyone because it's just too complicated and people get their knickers in a twist okay but for you a special task Matt, you have to do that before launching a set or before launching uh, the, the code so you type it in before you you, you start your set yes Type okay. in before you set. You have to because you can only do it from the store. So you'd have to okay. quit out of whatever set you were in. Yeah, got it. Okay, so there's I'm going to test it out and see if I have the same problems. Okay. I think that's a very useful function. To okay, um you get it, Matthias. You see how yeah. useful it can be. Okay, well, um, I'm pretty sure either I it's the first time I've noticed it not working. Either it's not working for the sub base and it's working for everything else or it's just broken. So uh, we'll look into it. But. Um, yeah, I uh, I wanted to explain that. All right, let's go for another. Matt, does that work with the uh, cold cutter stuff as well? The cold cutter stuff? As in the, uh, what is it called? Like the modulation and? No. Okay. Because you don't really need to do that with the cold cutter because you can change the cold cutter and you can store it into a patch anyway using this did um this was one of the things that we spoke about in the the first couple of tutorials david uh, this okay. um this red one here this I it is all discussed in the manual list but it is again this is one of the more complex aspects of that this red cold cutter slot is a special one that's the one that's always used to save the cold cutter Whatever you're doing with the, with, with if you change the settings of any of these ones, right? Say I'm using this one, right? Right, I'm activating this slot here. If I was to save that, I'll call it joke, okay? You notice that that slot goes off and the red slot goes on and now the red slot's changed its name to joke to correspond to the preset that I saved it into. Yeah? The cold cutter slots are sort of global, but if you change them and save a preset, it will always get saved in preset what's called slot zero, the polymorphically perverse slot, the special one, the red one. Okay? Cool. And um, even if, if, just to demonstrate again, let's put another one on. see which one you see which one is highlighted at the moment it's using that one and I could I could uh, take that one and I could change it let me add some modulation to it I'm going to add some uh, the old filter frequency okay and I'm going to save that in I'm going to call that joke two right and I think does it even Sa yeah you see there's a little me message that comes up saving patch with cold cutter slot zero that's meant to just try and remind you and get over the idea that it's always slot zero that is used when you save a patch that the cold cutter is saved into okay so um yeah the the update that you're the thing we were just looking at the macros it's not really relevant to the cold cutter because with a cold cutter you've got this different way of, you know, you, you each. Um, can can you explain a kind of use case where you'd want to change the cold cutter? Because I think you'll find it's it's covered by the system that we've got. You don't need to use the macros on it. Um, nothing in specific. Yeah. I was just ha have wondering. a think. Have a think about it and see if what I'm saying makes sense. If it doesn't, then come back and question me about it another time. Okay. All right. I was going to ask a question or make an observation about that with the, the cold cutter. Yes, that, mate. That session, um, I got lost. I didn't realize how versatile 
what you're in now was and all those um different bars there's different buttons of modulation yes. on the right hand side yes um the, the sort of long column you can get this lost one. in there forever and this is yes. where all the really clever stuff going on and all the patches on that, the preset hacks is happening that's and true. i didn't even really know that and i've been using it for a year and what i wanted to say and i've used mm -hmm. too many words already was that it was really detailed and i'm not very musical and it'd be great to go over it again on another I'll revisit this this section this cold right. section because although we covered it wow it was it, it was just the, the, the start of it it'd be good to go over it again okay thank you mike well what we'll do is i'll say that next week and you can remind me if i forget next week we'll have a cold cutter special and we'll go over these different pages okay um it, it i don't know if anyone actually reads the the online manual um it's funny when i was getting ready to put the app out i was like oh fucking hell i've got to do the manual now it's really boring and it's taking ages and ages and i was like no actually this is like i'm getting my my son ready for his bar mitzvah i'm making sure his costume's all nice and i'm about to present him and it's it's got to be proper you know so i spent a lot of time on the manual um i don't like manuals myself but if you do check it out which you can i'm not talking about the in-app help i'm talking about the actual manual which if you go to the store you can get it from here manual and that's going to pull up a page about the manual and you can sort of you can jump around the manual it, it's it could be better organized but there's a lot of stuff in there so you know for instance mike say that you wanted to right now to find out more about the coal cutter okay description of main modules and screens right that's what it is it's a main module and screen the coal cutter okay let's tap on that okay here we go play screen tone screen time pump c cut aka the coal cutter okay tap on that and there we go the coal cut screen contains the full coal cutter module the most complex module in jam you can say that again it contains these sub modules right that's what you're referring to mike so here is a yeah. lot of good info about the the coal cutter detailing each of the modules the sub modules within it the slice sequencer the gate sequencer the call and response the prd the modulation sequencer so there's a lot there in the manual but i'd be very happy to go over it um uh, it personally when we meet again okay i'll close the the manual now how do i do that do i have to type out for it if i do that if i do this yeah um so if i yeah dial the app up again um here's a little thing maybe actually just go back say we've um we're, we're up for making uh a new set perhaps okay you want to make your own thing hey there olive hi i was thinking about you wondering if you'd managed to to make some field recordings and start messing around with them um but it, it is it's it's not uh, relevant, but just when you do make your first set or you want to make a set, you're here, right? We start off, new set, okay? And then you tap on, at the top is the artist and the title, which defaults to me and the current date. Let's say, I was going to say, I'm going to change it to Matt and Olive, as an example. And um, Jam doesn't like spaces in things, right? If you have, and I s this was just actually messing me up before when I was trying to make a pack myself. When you load your own samples in, try and have samples without spaces in the names. It's very primitive, like old school MS DOS. I should really sort it out, but the, the coders have told me it's a quite a bore lake to do. So best is avoid spaces. There you see I typed Matt space and space Olive. It's put underscores in, which at least is quite helpful a bit. Now here's the title, and we'll call this uh a uh, cat <laughs> there we go <laughs> a multi multi-purpose always a useful phrase a cat well actually olive what i wanted to show you was some this quite nice little uh feature here right we want some artwork for our nice set that we're working on okay okay you just <laughs> double tap double tap anywhere on the artwork not on the play in the middle because if you do that it will start playing anywhere else double tap and there we go it's bringing up um a character who you know in fact let's have uh nice space dog he's not he's as we know a cat dog 
so he can feel he can be in a packable cap so now that graphic will be associated with your set and if I went back to the set you see now that Matt and Ollie's cap pack has got that graphic in for its artwork so I, I like the fact you can have your own artwork and I also like um, that when you load the set you get a nice good look at your artwork for a few seconds whilst it loads okay Excellent. So yeah that's uh, got a got a feature the, the visual aspect to it um, I think I'm gonna actually leave it at there I'll just throw it open one more time to see if anyone's got any questions about any aspect anything just absorbing <laughs> yeah I'm sorry I went off on that that macro <laughs> thing but um, it's funny I haven't I, I literally haven't told any of the users about it you're the first people to hear about that extra function and um, it, it, it can be a bit of a, a lifesaver you know for many people who are just using the the presets or updating or whatever it's, it's it's irrelevant but if you start to get into it more deeply um then it can be quite quite useful okay as i say way to Brilliant. experiment with that save a copy of your set so you don't come after and say matt it crashed my set for messing about because it didn't work or whatever set always save a copy good principle for most things yeah sorry matt what, what was that behringer gizmo last week you're talking about for plugging other instruments in yes i'll get that We have a two, two, two. I have one here as well. Yeah. It's like yeah. uh, they're very cheap, but the one from Matt is a bit different. Mine is like just uh, RCA in and out, no headphones. Mm. Uh, it, it came with a mixer I had years ago. Um, nice. And you just plug it in and it works on an iPad. You have to be careful with newer sound cards. Um, some work on iPads and some don't. And, um, okay. You're talking about sound cards? yeah yeah well that's why i i like my little behringer because yeah i also have a um, little one here yeah they're, they're for 20 euros you can't argue with this yeah. it actually it works it's on okay. the ipad it sounds okay it sounds okay um uh, it's stereo it works on the ipad it's got a headphone output it, it you know it doesn't need a power supply it's low enough power so that the ipad will power it although you know it will run your ipad battery down but um you could in fact get out of that because so th there it is. There's the Behringer. It's called the UCA222. Brilliant. UCA222. But to plug that in, because as you can see, it's just a normal USB on the end, right? You would need one of these, which is, they're called a USB adapter or sometimes right. a camera kit adapter. It's an adapter for the iPad. And I think typically you have to get Apple's one, which I think is a good... Which costs more than the, than more, the sound more card. More than the sound card, <laughs> yes. Um, I think... I don't know if there are any third party ones. Actually there are. There are. There are, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one for my projector. Uh, right. yours. Yeah, that they, 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 I think they can work. And actually for the, the newer iPads, which have the this this is an older adapter, which is called the lightning one, but the newer ones have the Thunderbolt. Um sorry, I don't want to get into all this, but you know it it's a ball ache the way that Apple have kept changing it. However, they have now changed it to this Thunderbolt, and now it means that the iPad, the newer iPads and the newer Macs have the same sockets on them, which actually is a lifesaver. So it, it's sort of sorting itself out in the end. It's just a ball ache for those of us that spent hundreds of pounds on adapters for the, you know, to try and wire everything together. But um, you can get quite nice little, um, you know, ex let me see if I can. Yeah, this one's a USB-C, actually. USB-C, yeah. Oh. It doesn't like it when I pull the power the uh, adapter out. Th this is a little gizmo, which um, you can just about see that little plug there. That is the Thunderbolt for this new iPad, right? And that plugs in on the side of my iPad. And then on this, it's got quite cool because it's got where you can plug the iPad's power supply in. It's got even a card reader, which I don't use. It's got a little headphone output. It's got a USB. So that's where the USB is where I'd plug in my USB sound card. And it's even got an HDMI as well. And these are about, you know, 30, 40 euros, something like that. So they're quite handy as well. You don't have to have this Apple one, depending on 
on how old your, your iPad is will be the type of adapter that you need. But the point is that you need an adapter to plug in your USB sound card. And when you've got your USB sound card plugged in, you can plug audio inputs into it, for example, a keyboard or whatever, as long as it's a line level signal. And then you can even just monitor it on its nice little um, headphone socket that it's got built in. It even has a little volume control. Um, or you can also take the outputs from these phono plugs and plug it into your your big big system, your speakers as well. So, yeah, that's uh, a great way to expand the capabilities of your your iPad is with a USB interface. Yeah. Okay. Are there any uh, other um, programs for recording audio that you can think of on on an, uh, an iPad? Huh? Didn't quite catch it, Ian. What? What? Repeat yourself, please. Uh, are there any other um, programs that uh, you could think of that, that would be good for recording audio on an iPad, uh, along with, say, for instance, uh, a USB connection as well? Say, for instance, if I if I wanted to uh, record vocals, just so it's like kind of portable. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, I mean. Honestly, an excellent one is GarageBand, which comes bundled free with the iPad. And you know, I got to hand it to Apple; it is a pretty powerful. They and they keep enhancing it. Um, you know, in fact, they a few years ago, when after we came out with Ninja Jam, they put in a sort of loop part of it. I was like, "Oh, you've been watching Ninja Jam, you have." And so they've even put in a sort of loop instrument to it as well. Um, but it's a proper multi-track recorder, and it it, it, it is good GarageBand, and you can even use it. Um, I haven't used it this way, but I'm pretty sure you could record in, say you wanted to record your guitar in, mate, or your voice like you're saying, yeah? You could record it into GarageBand, you could edit some clips there, and then you could save them out and then load them into Jam to mess around with. Um, so that's that's pretty, a quite a good workflow as well. Um, I mentioned uh, recently that there is a, an editor within Jam coming on stream soon. We're just wiring up at the moment. It's working pretty well so that's going to be a big help as well but yeah if you if you want to get a proper editor or you want to find a program to record the things in i'd possibly recommend GarageBand i'm sure there's a lot of other ones as well but as GarageBand's free and sort of comes from apple so you know it works it's quite a good one to get to get started with have a mess around with hmm. thanks Mark. thanks yeah there's quite clever they, they sort of simplify um you know, routing with different interfaces and so on can be a bit of a nightmare on y on your desktop or your laptop machines. But the iPad simplifies it. So basically, whatever you plug in takes precedence. So say you've got uh, your headphones plugged in, you've got microphone. As soon as you plug in the sound card, it goes, aha, you want me to swap to the sound card, which is generally what you want to do. So um, it kind of whatever is the kind of dominant input, that is what will come up as your record input and then you can record in using that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks. All right, party people. Um, I think I'm going to keep it short and sweet again. And thanks very much for your attention. And uh, have a great week. And I'll aim to be here same time next week. I'll put a little reminder on um, on Facebook. And uh, next week we'll have a bit of a coal cutter special. But also um, do mess about. Just make a note of any questions that you've got. I love to to hear them and to um, uh, answer them. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Nice thanks. Matt. All right. Take it easy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Much Thank love. you. Okay. Hey, uh, Matt. Yes. Did you get my email about NFTs? About? About NFTs? It was like a Twitter link. Ah. Um. It was talking about NFTs. Did you send it to Dinny? I send it to Jam Pro. I, I, Olive, I'm not sure. Um, I've been a little bit lax on my email. I'll, I'm <laughs> going to put in my direct email address into the chat now, okay? Matt B at okay. ninjatune.net. You're, you're all, as you've, I think you've all mainly got it actually because you've all been helping and con contributing various things and you're the core bod. So, um, there's my email. Please don't give it out to all and sundry. Um, but uh, you're welcome to... All graffiti kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
um, yeah, you're welcome to email me di directly. Okay. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Okay. See you later. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.